What's up YouTube, it's David from Live Forever Die Trying, posting my December TBR for you today. And you're probably looking at the date on this and it's probably going to be December 12th or 14th and you're asking why are you publishing this so late. And to be honest, I forgot about doing it entirely, but I put out a poll on YouTube and the vast majority of you said you'd like to see it anyways. So it's going to be a little bit different. I actually have more books to show you because of this. I normally only set my goal to about three to five-ish, but we're actually gonna go up to seven this month. And the reason I don't usually go that high is because it's very easy to demotivate myself. If I set my goal for seven or 10 books and I only finish my first book at like day seven or day nine or day 10, then I'm very demotivated to try to finish the rest of my reading because I know there's no way I'm going to hit that goal with the limited time that I have. So I usually set it for four and hopefully I surpass it. Now the reason I have seven this month is because I've already finished about two or three of these books. I think I've proper finished two and closing in on the third one now. But because of that, y'all get more to watch. <laughs> so without further ado, let's start out with the first book. It is my one and only political book this month, and that is The War on Normal People by Andrew Yang. So Andrew Yang, if you're not familiar, ran for the Democrats in the 2020 primary elections. He ended up not making it, obviously. Um, but his whole campaign was centered around universal basic income. I'm gonna actually do a one-on-one -on -one chat with one of my friends talking about this book more in depth, but the synopsis is he defines what the normal person in America is, the medium age, sorry, median, median age, median income, median net worth, and then shows what's happening to the, the standard person in America. He shows how jobs are being automated and these towns are being replaced by Amazon and what have you. And then he prescribes UBI and a return to a human-centered capitalism. He wants to figure out a way to assign value to things like uh, child care or elder care or these other mutual aid aspects that currently capitalism doesn't reward in the form of an income. So all in all, this is a book I highly recommend. Um, based off the fact that it was not just a advertisement for his political campaign, it actually does address issues that he wants to fix. Second up, we have a book that's actually named after me. I have Bill, Gilf Bill Guilford's Stay Young Forever or Die Trying. And this, I believe, was published in 2017. I'm just gonna quickly read through the first and last paragraph on the cover page, and then I have one quote I wanna show you from inside the book. This is one I have not read yet. So the opening cover says, this book is a full throttle, high energy ride through the latest research, popular mythology, and ancient wisdom of mankind's oldest obsession. How can we live longer and better? Then the final is, the promise of eternal youth has been tantalizing mankind for millennia, and Spring Chicken, a compulsively readable mix of deep reporting, fascinating science, and a prescriptive takeaway will reveal the dangerous pitfalls we face in our quest for it and the extraordinary possibilities that lie before it. Um, before us, rather. So reading through this book quickly, it seems like we take a historical look about people attempting to find longevity or life extension in the past, which I'm super interested in. And I'm hoping since it's a fairly recent book, it's also going to let me know about some research that I might not have been familiar with already. Plus, I really like the subtitle, so I just had to get this book. Uh, for that last quote I wanted to show you, I thought this was very, just kind of funny, a, a way to look at life, if you would. It's by a guy named Sean Morey, and it says, I think the most unfair thing about life is the way it ends. I mean, life is tough. It takes up a lot of your time. What do you get at the end of it? A death. What is that? A bonus? I think the life cycle is all backwards. You should get to die first. Get it out the way. Then you live an old age. Go home. Get kicked out when you're too young. You get your gold watch. You go to work. You work 40 years until you're young enough to enjoy your retirement. Then you go to college, you do drugs, alcohol, you party, you have sex, and then you get ready for high school. You go to grade school, you become a kid, you play, don't have any responsibilities, you then become a little baby, go back in the womb, and spend your last nine months floating, and then finish off as a gleam in someone's eye. I just thought that was beautiful. Third up, this is a Verso Books publication. This is After Geoengineering by Holly Jean Buck. Um, first of all, this cover is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm part of the way through this already. If you're not familiar, geoengineering is taking interventionalist steps 
to solve climate change. And right now it's a very futurist topic. There's not much actually in the way of active treatments, therapies, sequestering, if you would, uh, to get the carbon out the atmosphere. So what is after geoengineering about? Well, if geoengineering takes place, whether that's via drawdown, carbon sequestering, you know, gas pumps, or whether that is uh, putting sulfates in the, the sky to reflect light into space to bring the temperature down, that is a process that must be continued. You can't do it once, it's not a one-time fix. If your emissions keep rising, your carbon sequestering is gonna keep rising in addition to that. So this was kind of a look on what our economies are gonna look like. What is What are we gonna pass down to the generations behind us if we choose to use geoengineering as a solution for our climate crisis. The fourth book I have, I'm also reading for a book club, which is Technological Slavery by uh, Ted, and I cannot pronounce the last name, but this guy, if you're not familiar, is the Unabomber. So we have a very future forward TBR. We're reading about climate change, what we can do in the future. We're reading about life extension and longevity and coming technologies. We're reading about UBI and future politics. You know, if capitalism is coming down, what solutions can we do to keep it afloat? Or is there another system that we can go to that's gonna be better? It's all very forward thinking. So in technological slavery, we're looking at, you know, how is technology worsening our lives? Should we regress back to a more primitive state? Is that gonna add more meaning to our life? And all in all, this is kind of a manifesto. So if you know the Unabomber, he's a, he's a screwed up duck, but from what I've understood, he makes some points in this manifesto, and I'm really hoping this purchase does not put me on a list. And then the final three books were actually all ARCs. Um, so I've been going through NetGalley to get advanced reader copies in exchange for honest reviews, and I was actually surprised by the quality of these books. Um, so first up, we had Biohack Your Brain, which is all about this neuroscientist aim to improve cognition. Now, she works with NFL players, and personally, I thought it had a little bit of a branding issue. Reading through the book, it addresses a lot of very baseline therapies, you know, how to optimize diet, exercise, sleep, mindfulness, and then a few brain games. But when I hear biohacking, I'm thinking transcranial direct magnetic stimulation. I'm thinking neurofeedback and monitoring brain waves. I'm thinking of much more interventionalist steps to kind of improve cognition. So I thought it had a little bit of a branding issue, but overall, it's a very good book if you haven't read a lot into proper biohacking. Next up, we had Ageless by Andrew Steele. So in Ageless, it is described as aging, not cancer, not heart disease, is the true underlying cause of most human death and suffering. This I agree with. If you look at COVID-19, who's dying? It's mainly old people. If you were not old, you probably wouldn't die from COVID, but that's neither here nor there. So we accept aging as inevitable that as we advance in our years, our bodies and mind begin to deteriorate and we're more likely to be failed by dementia or disease. But we never really ask, is it necessary? And then he goes on kind of in the same kind of, you know, tone. But what I'm hoping for, since this is a 2021 release, I'm hoping it's gonna have more cutting edge science and more information about the same topics that I haven't you know, read or been up to date about with. So we're gonna cover DNA technologies, mitochondria technologies, stem cells, probably uh, pluripotent stem cells, um, and then ways to increase our immune systems. So I'm very excited for this one. And then the final book is Future Proof, which I think this is going to be addressing automation in the same way that Andrew Yang's War Normal People is because the title of it, or the subtitle rather, is Nine Rules for Humans in the Age of Automation. Um, and he goes on to say, you know, in Future Proof, the New York Times technology col columnist Kevin Rose, Rose, Ross, lays out a hopeful, pragmatic vision for how people can succeed in the machine age by making themselves irreplaceably human. So he talks about do work that is surprising, social, and scarce, the type that machines can't do, Demote your phone, work, where, uh, work with other people, and then treat AI like an army of chimpanzees. 
So it sounds like it's not resisting technology, but finding a place where you can fit into a society that is alongside AI, self-driving cars, and what have you. So I'm very interested to see what solutions this prescribes versus a more direct governmental approach, which is like what Andrew Yang's talking about. But yeah, so I thought this was a very fun December uh, reading list. It feels like I'm focusing on the future, like what's coming in 2021, the new year. Um, that may be just me trying to add meaning after the fact, but still, I think it's a, a pretty enjoyable reading list. If you do like this and want to follow along, as always, uh, I have all my information in the description below. Subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to give me a little bit of dopamine, hit that like button and drop a comment. Um, as always, I also have affiliate links down below where you can purchase these books, although I always encourage supporting local bookstores or using smile.amazon.com to donate a portion to charity. I personally would recommend SENS Research Foundation, which is a life extension foundation. That's all I got for you today. Peace.